Many years ago, driving through Bacha's central desert, I was mesmerized by the dramatic landscape and the enormous skies. I had no idea I was driving through a conservation area inhabited by hundreds of cactus species, many of which are found nowhere else on Earth. I didn't know and I didn't care. Lately, I've become fascinated by these peculiar plants and have asked a few experts what they're all about. Their answers are in a series of short clips and I hope they'll spike your imagination too. They're unfriendly, they're vicious, spiny, you know, they get in your way, they're always sticking out somewhere, you bump into them. People seem to love them. Cacti, I love them, I love, I love the, the, the spiny sort of rejection they have of life around them. Any beauty, I'd have to look quite hard. But their beautiful architectural shapes are, are just fabulous. I think they are like very architectural and amazing plants. Where they attract the pollinator with stunning flowers. I love cacti, they're fantastic. Their adaptability to different climates, different situations, just absolutely brilliant. From the, the shapes of them, they're all phallic, a lot of the taller ones. And they come from only the Americas cacti, and the Caribbean included. They come from freezing deserts in Nevada to minus 25 to 40 degrees Celsius. Some live in snow under snow for four months of the year. Some come from the driest and hottest places on our planet. Some come from some of the highest altitude areas in South America to 18,000 feet above sea level. They don't grow above the ground when they're mature because they can't go above, above the ground. They'll just get frostbitten. You know, it's that adaptability to climates and the way that it managed to store all the nutrients and in times of real hardship, drought, even cold conditions and so on, inside their structures that makes them fat, so fascinating. The cactaceae and succulents absorb oxygen during the day, releasing CO2, and then during the night, the other way around. They see as a way to the way they survive in very difficult climates. Quite well, close to cactus, saw straucii, foxy tail cactus, and it's awesome. It's one, one I've seen at the Andes growing thousands and thousands of feet above sea level. We walk two foot in front of you and you're out of breath. Amazing plant. And you can see it grows at high altitude without even getting a few feet from it because of the fur. That's an incident of quality, like with the hair on our arms, but to a much exacerbated degree. So when the cold air hits that side on, it filters through, slows the airs down, filters through, and the hairs, the, what do you, um, anyway, air goes, conducts in and around the hair before it gets to the skin, or in this case, the stem of the plant, it's much warmer air. It conducts, no, it conducts, what is it it does, anyway? And that's the growth this year. Uh, oh. Pretty quick growing last year. Look at the year before. I had to slow down, then they collapse on the floor, then they regrow again. At minus six in here, the flowering's been superb this year. They've needed the cold. You can visit Tom's World Garden of Plants at Lullingston Castle from April to September every year. And at Kew Gardens, Ellie designed the 2011 Outdoor Cactus Roundabout but you'll have to wait now till the summer of 2012 for the next spiky extravaganza. <laughs>